Hi guys, welcome back to another foundation review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the latest from Bite. It is their Changemaker Foundation. As always, I will be doing application before and after a flash photo test, show you how it looks in natural light, of course, show you how it looks at the end of the day, and there will be timestamps down below if you would like to skip ahead. I have reviewed a bunch of foundations recently, so they will all be linked up here along with down below. And be sure to subscribe because I am going to be reviewing the new Makeup Forever Foundation, the updated Laura Mercier. There's tons of foundation reviews that I plan to get to. And I did swatch this foundation in comparison to a couple of other more popular ones if you're still trying to figure out your shade. One last thing, I did swatch three shades of this foundation in a recent Get Ready With Me. So if you want to see uh, T100, T105, and T110 swatched on my face, that will be linked down below. But without further delay, let's get into it. So the Bite Changemaker Foundation is the supercharged micellar foundation. I know that confused a lot of people. I actually was just doing like some googling myself to determine exactly what they might have been getting at by the micellar. Like on the Sephora website they say it has micellar technology which gently mimics the skin um, for a more smooth non-cakey look but when you look up micellar it's always attached even just micellar not micellar water like on dictionary.com it's always like kind of attached to like soap and surfactants and detergents so I don't really know the whole backing behind that. I guess they felt like it sounded some, like something new. Um, and I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because it's about whether you like the foundation or not, but it comes in, I believe, 32 shades, which is pretty good. Uh, I like their naming conventions. It makes it like kind of easy to figure it out or a little bit easier anyways. As always, you can get a sample at Sephora if you are trying to determine your shade. And I always recommend just hopping on YouTube and watching a bunch of reviews. That's always, always how I share shade match myself. So I'm going to be wearing the shade T100. It is quite similar to T105. I thought T105 was more yellow. This one is a little bit more neutral, which I have been leaning towards in my foundations. It retails for $39.50 American and $52 Canadian. You're getting a full fluid ounce in here. It is made in Italy, like a lot of Kendo products. So Kendo owns like Fenty and a bunch of those brands. A lot of their products are made in either like Italy or Canada. And also Bite is actually a Canadian born brand. So very, very excited to see that they had a foundation out. I absolutely love their lip products. So I'm gonna go ahead and wear both of the primers today too. So they launched two primers. There's, they're both the change makers. So this one is for normal to dry and this one is for normal to oily in store if you're just kind of grabbing at them the normal to dry looks a little more shiny and the normal to oily looks a little bit more matte so I'm gonna go ahead and matte if, use the matte one on this side of my face these primers are 50 bucks in Canada I don't know what they retail for in the States I feel like that's like kind of expensive for a primer like from bite I don't know like I expect that from like YSL or something but I felt like $50 is kind of up there like if you were to go purchase the foundation and the primer in Canada that's a hundred bucks um I would expect the primer to be closer to like I don't know like a 39-ish maybe like obviously it's a, a high-end brand but by their lip products are like pretty well priced so I thought that that price was up there a little bit and then I'm gonna use the normal to dry on this side my skin is kind of combination I would say depending on the day I can be a little bit sweaty um, but I'm not like crazy crazy oily but I have had really oily skin for most of my life so I can always give you a good idea of how I feel like a foundation will perform on oily skin because I've lived most of most of my life um, as a real oily gal. I don't know if you can tell in person, but there's a bit of a slight shine on this side of my face. Still a slight shine here, but less so on the side that I've mattified. I'm gonna use this much foundation on my face and start there. And I'm gonna use a sponge for application that will affect your coverage depending on the tool that you use. And I've got some breakouts as well. Oh no, I didn't do my, my little clip of my turning the heads. Oh, that's like the first time I've ever done that. I was just like excited to jump in. Shiced and blot this off my face. Just keep that in mind <laughs> when I go to do the turn. So yeah, this foundation claims to be medium and have a natural finish, which is kind of my preference for foundations at the moment. I like a medium coverage. I like something that's a little bit more natural, but something that still lasts. Like I don't want anything greasy. I just want it to look more like as skin-like as possible. 
and a good way to get that as well is to use as little foundation as possible and a sponge I feel like helps give me a, quite a natural coverage. So just looking at the website, it does claim to be good for dry, combo, and oily. And in terms of their like highlighted ingredients, it's the micellar technology, which I mentioned, um, and the antioxidant rich ingredient um, in here that helps nurture your complexion is the maquis berry. But in my opinion, like I understand that they wanna do something different and call it a mic micellar technology. Like I appreciate that, sure. But if you're going to do that and you know that the whole world thinks one thing about this type of ingredient, I think it would have been fun or fun and helpful to play around with that and say like, you know, something in their in their advertising, in their marketing, make it very clear as to why they've labeled it micellar technology, because why would you want like a, something that is associated as being a makeup remover? in your foundation that's supposed to last all day on your face you know what i mean so could have said things like oh you think my cellar is only to remove makeup how about think about it in your foundation um this is why it is beneficial and don't be confused because there's so many foundations out there there's so much information and you don't want as a brand i feel like any barrier to purchase i'm gonna put just a smidge more on my cheeks Something to note about this product as well is it is um, it is part of the clean at Sephora. So I think there's about 50 or so ingredients that can't be included in these products. Sorry, I get interrupted. <laughs> My boyfriend just came home. But they are clean at Sephora, which I feel like there's not a ton of um, like complexion products and makeup products that are labeled clean. It's definitely more associated with skincare. So if that's something that you look for, then that is nice. So, something to keep in mind that I always find funny though is when people say, why is that dog barking so loud in my building? Um, but is when they say they don't like chemicals in their products, which I understand what people mean when they say that generally. They mean like harsh chemicals and you know things that don't need to be in there that are just fillers, etc. But like everything's a chemical. Water is a chemical. So be wary when people say that. Uh, and it's also vegan, cruelty-free, and gluten-free. So yeah, I think this is a really good shade match. Like I said, I, t I tend to go a little more neutral in my foundations lately, kind of this golden peach neutral that I've encouraged some of you to try as well, who have been hooked on really, really yellow foundations for a while. Um, but I think that this is a good match. And if you're curious about my other shades and foundations, you can always type my username into the YouTube description box and, um, put the foundation name after and see if I've reviewed it and see what my shade is. Or you can also um, look in the description box. I have some like some of my more popular shades down below if you're trying to figure out what you might be. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my photos and I'm gonna come back with my concealer on to powder my face as I do have um, the accompanying powder to go with this foundation. And then yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I will be right back. Okay, so I have my concealer on, my under eyes are powdered, and I'm going to be using the uh, Change Maker Flexible Coverage Press Powder. I have T1. <clears throat> I feel like T2 could have potentially been a bit of a better match. This is what they sent me. Obviously, this is not a sponsored review. I would have verbally said it in the beginning. Sometimes I get that question. Um, <clears throat> but this says that it helps to mattify, helps with longevity. You can touch up on the go with it. It's got blurring properties in there as well and it isn't a the probably the best match for me but because it's not like a high coverage powder it's not um it's not it doesn't need to be like completely spot on you know what I mean and this foundation is interesting I feel like I've seen so many mixed reviews on it when I did a get ready with me about a week or two ago the one I mentioned with the face swatches when I finished my makeup I was like holy crap my skin looks incredible and then there was other times where I wore this where I feel like I put a little bit too much on and it got kind of cakey so I know I say this all the time but use as little foundation as possible and spot conceal and go in with powder foundation and go in with like a setting spray and stuff like that to pull your look together don't only count on foundation for your coverage i think that's a big thing that i've changed in the past year that has really led my makeup looks to look better and i'm still getting the coverage i want but i'm not getting that cake face that i've definitely had in the past where it's like very very flat like i've got freckles i want those to show through 
um, that is something I've really changed in my makeup and I feel like foundations just look better that way too. So I think you can see even with powdering there's definitely still a natural look to my skin. It still has some sheen to it. It's not completely flat but it's not greasy by any means either. And I did want to mention the foundation has a very thick texture when you squeeze it out of the tube but on the face I feel like it doesn't feel heavy or thick and I don't think I noticed any any scent. I've I've determined that, you know, I feel like I can give a very thorough review, but one thing that I never notice and never touch on that people are always like, it's so scented, you said nothing about scent. I'm really not sensitive to scents. The only foundation that ever really got me was the Huda Beauty one, because I could smell it after it went on my face like an hour later. I don't notice anything in here and it's supposed to be like more clean and stuff. I'm pretty sure there is actually fragrance in it in the description of ingredients, but, um, what is going on. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the rest of my makeup. As always, everything that I'm wearing on my face will be listed down below. And I do have um, a kind of a two-part lip swatch video coming on these Bite Lip Pencils, their new kind of formulation and new, a couple of new shades in there, I believe too. So that will be linked down below, but I will be right back with my full face. Okay, so I've got my full face of makeup on now. I did just film kind of like a mini tutorial using the new uh, Too Faced kind of highlighter palette and eyeshadow palette. So that will be linked down below. And as I mentioned, I did do a lip swatch video and yesterday, like I swatched two sets of like the entire year lip swatch, the lip collection. And I realized I left out the shade Calvados. So I figured I would show you Calvados here right now, because this is not going to be my lip swatch video, but the shade that I actually want to wear, I want to show you my favorite shade from this collection. There's a bunch of gorgeous nudes, but this red really stood out to me and it's in Negroni. I don't know if this is new or if it was in the previous matte collection, but oh my god. This is like my new favorite red. I think it is just absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. I do also have a video on my favorite red lipsticks. This is not included, but lots of other great reds in there. I will link that down below. So to get back to the matter at hand, the foundation, I think it looks really, really gorgeous. I think my skin looks really good, but I definitely do have like quite a bit of shot, not like shininess, but there is like a good bit of sheen going on. I did just put quite a bit of highlighter on my the tops of my cheekbones, but more for, like through my T-zone. I feel like you can see the shine. And this is the like kind of more dry primer side. This is the primer for more oily skin to keep that in mind. But I do think it looks really, really natural on the skin as long as you don't put too much. I found when I put too much of this on my face, it kind of started to settle a little bit here and I'm starting to have that with more foundations. I don't know if that's just with age or what's going on, um, but nothing really, really bad. Just something that I noted the more of this that I put on my face and that's kind of like with any foundation anyways. But to talk about the flash photo test, I think this is where you really see how it is very natural and very not full coverage. Like I feel like sometimes people expect every foundation to be full coverage and if it doesn't cover everything on their face, they're dissatisfied, but the foundation's not claiming that then why would we kind of dock it for not doing that? If anything, I would dock it for being full coverage when I bought something that claims to be medium. But anyways, uh, I think you'll see here in my studio lighting that you can really see my freckles, you can really see my skin, there's a sheen on my skin. And then even more so, I feel like when I take that flash photo, it barely looks like I have anything on my face. But of course, when you go ahead and add in concealer and powder and bronzer, that is gonna then bump up your coverage even further. And that's why I mentioned um, not putting too much foundation on your face if you are trying to achieve that more natural look. So overall, I think things look really, really good so far, but I'm going to go ahead and wear this for a few more hours and I will check back with you in some natural light. Time for a midday check-in so you can see what it looks like in natural light. I also decided to leave the lipstick on and we can kind of do a bit of a wear test. I did just finish up eating lunch. I had some cauliflower crust pizza and then earlier today I had some grapes and strawberries and I think things are holding up really, really well. I didn't try particularly hard to like not mess around with the lipstick. I did get a little bit of bleeding and I just kind of like, not blood, but like lipstick bleeding. <laughs> Uh, and just kind of like smushed that away and I think things look good. It doesn't claim to be like a crazy long wearing lipstick and a, and a shade like this kind of red is gonna last longer than maybe uh, one of their nude shades but I think the lipstick still looks good and as for the foundation I think it looks good as well. I've heard other people say and I kind of noticed it myself too um, that it looks a little bit better like a little bit after you've applied it and I feel like if you want to 
eliminate having to like wait for that look. There's just something a little bit odd about it. Uh, you can use like if you use a setting spray or some kind of hydrating mist or something. It's not that it's dry. It's just like it doesn't kind of melt or blend into the skin really well initially but I feel like if you add a little bit of hydration or setting spray or something like that uh, after you applied it that kind of helps to just kind of move things along and make it all look really really good but I didn't do that today because it is a review but I have done that in the past so yeah it does feel a little bit heavier on the skin than it did this morning and I find that with any foundation if I'm having like a little bit of an oilier day as your oils start to push through you can kind of feel it but that being said uh, it doesn't like my oils like I'm not super oily it still feels really comfortable on my skin it doesn't feel like anything's gonna slip around actually I do feel like it kind of warms up a little bit not like a crazy oxidization or anything Anything. but yeah I'm gonna wear it for a few more hours and I will check back with you in some natural light it's uh, 12 30 now but I did put this on foundation on at like 7 30 really early start to the day so probably an earlier ending but we'll still get a full day's wear test in there so yeah I will see you in a couple hours okay I am back it is the end of the day it is just after 6 p.m. and I put this foundation on I would say just after 7 a.m. around 7 30 probably got my glasses on I had some contact lens issues so I'm sorry for the glare uh, but just to show you this side of my face was the one that had the more uh, dewy primer this one was the one that had the more matte I honestly don't see a big difference between the two and I've tested out both primers uh, and I never saw a huge difference in terms of wear when it came to the primers underneath the foundation I I just went outside and it's very cold so if you live in a cold place my eyes were watering and I see a little bit of like a I can see where the teardrop was and I'm also missing a chunk of foundation up here where I have my glasses on I'm missing some foundation here so definitely things have started to get patchy they've started to look heavy they started to look a little bit greasy I'm gonna repowder my face although I'm about to wash my face one thing I will say is I'm very surprised that this lip has lasted I probably if I wasn't doing like a straight-up wear test would have reapplied it I honestly I think I would have removed it and then reapplied it it's starting to feel a little bit dry now but it is still quite comfortable and I, I've eaten today I think it looks really good and it doesn't claim to be like a super long-lasting product so I think that's pretty impressive so yeah I, I gotta say there's been a couple times where I've worn this foundation and I thought it looked good. There's been a couple times where I haven't been that impressed. Today is definitely a day where I'm not that impressed. I really wanted to love this foundation. I think that Bite is a really cool company. They're Canadian. I've got a good relationship with them. I really love all of their lip products. I love their lip lab. I love their messaging. Every lipstick collection they come out with, I'm like, every shade is a banger. But this to me is, is it's a disappointment, unfortunately. It just... It didn't work for me and, and it's kind of hard to nail down why it didn't work because like some like I said some days it was good some days it was bad when I did that get ready with me it looked incredible on my skin wore really really nicely that day I wore it for you know a few hours after filming but there's a lot of foundations that I love right now and I and I've talked about this with other products but I never want to have to work too hard to make something work so whether it's like oh you need to use this you need to do this you need to use this application like unless it's gonna give me incredible skin taking the extra steps to make a foundation work is not something I'm particularly interested in. I will say I like the shade. I think the shade looks looks good on my skin. I enjoy the powder. I'll probably continue to use the powder and probably the primers as well potentially, but the foundation is not something I see myself reaching for besides like to kind of maybe try it again, but it's not something that I see myself reaching for over like all of my other favorites that I have right now and there's nothing I can really compare it to. I'm always asked to compare foundations and I always recommend, you know, like if you're looking for me to compare this to this just watch both of the reviews and kind of see my thoughts because unless I'm testing them side by side or it's been a year in between reviews it's kind of hard to make that direct comparison in a really accurate way the best way is to like watch my review and see what I think at that time but yeah I don't know this is kind of a letdown for me I know a lot of people really liked it and it kind of breaks my heart because I love bites so so much and I will continue to love their lip products. Like I said, these new lip pencils are incredible. The shades are amazing. I'm glad that it is um, on the cleaner side. It is vegan. It is cruelty free. That is all amazing. So if you're looking for a foundation option that kind of is under that um, umbrella, perhaps get a sample. Maybe it can work for you. You know, makeup is a very, very personal thing. Something that I might not like, you may love, vice versa. But yeah, for me, this definitely was a bit of a letdown and uh, I can't really give it my stamp of approval and I can't really 
you know, normally I'll give you an estimate on like if you have dry skin, if you have oily skin, but honestly, it's kind of an odd formula and I'm not really sure. Not I'm not saying it won't work for anybody, but based on my experience, I'm not sure what the best skin type is for it at the moment, but yeah, anyways, my opinion should only be one part of your buying decision anyway, so watch a couple reviews, see what you think, and like I said, if you can get a sample, I recommend that. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what foundation you would like to see reviewed next, and if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SamanthaJaneYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!